thank you for joining me again. Uh, how are you keeping? Um, this week, uh, on Monday, which was the 13th of September, um, it was uh, a special day. It was the birthday of Bernard Pearson. Um, he's probably not watching, but if you're watching Bernard, happy birthday. <laughs> now, um, Bernard uh, is uh, known, better known to some as the, uh, the Cunning Artificer. Um, and he is the uh, owner and founder of the Discworld Emporium. Uh, and earlier this year, uh, they put out an announcement that uh, Bernard and his wife Isabel, who've uh, been the uh, sort of figureheads of the place for uh, quite a while, um, were retiring. Um, and also that the uh, shop, which has been closed, um, they've been online, running online, but the actual shop building itself uh, has been closed due to COVID for um, well, 18 months. Uh, so they've decided to go entirely online, entirely mail order, um, and not to reopen their little shop uh, in Wing Canton, uh, which is a great pity because it used to be um, a bit of a, a festive um, tradition of uh, my wife and I, we used to go down to Wing Canton um, to the little shop, buy some f silly little Christmas presents for uh, for friends of ours from the Discworld Emporium, um, have a chat with Bernard, um, and then go and have some lunch uh, in, in the little pub in Wincanton and then come home again. Uh, so we won't be able to do that, which is a great shame. Um, we, we couldn't do that the year before COVID because we were really busy uh, up before Christmas. Um, so yeah, we missed out on our last opportunity, which is sad. But anyway, I wanted to do uh, a bit of a tribute uh, video to um, to Bernard because of his birthday and also he's just retired. So um, Bernard is somebody who, uh, although I only met him fairly recently, I first met Bernard in uh, 2016, I think it was 2016, um, uh, I'd made uh, the mended drum here behind me um, for uh, for an old hammer event um, that year um, and I just uh, sort of sent an email to the uh, Emporium and said oh do you fancy having a Christmas Christmas window display having that on uh, display and they did so I took it down there and got chatting to, to Bernard um, and if you've never met Bernard what's the best way to describe him he's he's like the world's best granddad <laughs> is that kind of extremely confident but also very uh down to earth and grounded and level headed um chap uh, a very very sort of wizardly uh character um who's got quite a few quite a few stories to tell <laughs> um and uh yeah it's, it was really great having having a chat with him um we got talking about uh, my sculpting and my wife's artwork um, and as Bernard's, Bernard's background is in um, sculpting so we were we were discussing um, materials and um, uh, equipment and so I he took me into his uh, his little workshop studio and was showing me how to work with the the clays that he works with which were, were slightly different to ones that that I was using um, and he was generous enough to give me a selection of uh, his handmade tools from his uh, from his very own toolbox. Um, so I've got you know there's a couple of um, putty stamps here like texture stamps uh, and then ones that he's carved from uh, paintbrush handles so that, they're really nice um, sort of memories of him <laughs> to have in in my uh, in my toolbox and I've been using them fairly recently um, working on the larger scale um, Zordrak miniatures that I've been sculpting and also the the bigger um, Brian Froud giant which I'm I'm still working on he's here um, so I, I did those in um, some of the clay that Bernard gave me to play with um, using Bernard's tools so they're a bit of a tribute to to him a, a bit of a dedication to to Bernard um, uh, and I hadn't realized until um, I started having a chat with him, that I'm actually I'm much more familiar uh, with his works than I thought I was. Um, so Bernard's uh, first company that I am aware of was that he started Clarecraft uh, in the 80s, 
um, producing uh, ceramic quirky fantasy models and through that met um, met Terry Pratchett and so Claire Craft started producing the licensed Discworld statues that were sort of fairly sizable. Now when I got into uh, Discworld in my teens in the um, in the 90s um, there was a, a uh, sort of I'm going to call it a hippie shop um, that I used to used to frequent selling you know, candles and incense and um, alchemy gothic things and wind chimes and um, fun things, uh, some, some of which I still like, I'm still quite keen on uh, a bit of, bit of incense, a um, bit of panpipe music every now and again. Um, and this shop sold uh, the, the Discworld figures, the Craft Discworld figures, and I spent ages looking at these things. I really could never, could never afford them at, at that age, but, um, and also I had no, no space to put them. They were quite large uh, figures, but really quite fun. Um, quite quirky, didn't take themselves too seriously take Discworld, which I think, honestly, if you're going to do a take on Discworld, it needs to be quite quirky, don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, this is why I kind of prefer the, the Josh Kirby illustrations to the Paul Kidby um, illustrations. I appreciate the talent of both, but I just think that the quirkiness, the silliness of the Josh Kirby um, artwork says Discworld uh, more to me, and the Claire Craft figures did a really good job of, um, of picking that up. Uh, and I think actually because they pre predated the Paul Kidby, um, you can see some of the, the Claire Craft interpretations coming through in the, um, in the Paul Kidby uh, later artwork. Um, uh, Claire Craft also produced, uh, I've got some um, of the larger micro arts figures, but they also produced the actual 28 mil um, metal figures. So I've got uh, the luggage and the librarian here. And these were sculpted by um, uh, ex Citadel sculptor uh, Chaz Elliott. Um, so there's, there is an old hammer <laughs> um, Wargaming connection there. Um, and I don't know if they were uh, cast at Wargames Foundry. Certainly um, there's a whole range of them in the cabinets at Foundry. So I don't know, they might have been cast that I need to ask. Um, Brian uh, about it. They could just be there because Brian likes them or because Foundry painted them on behalf of Claire Craft to put them in catalogues. I don't know. Anyway, full range. They're, they're, they're very, very cool figures. And I, I actually prefer them to the um, to the micro arts, not just because uh, they're 28 mil, as opposed to the micro arts, which are 35 mil and look ridiculous sized against anything else that I have, um, but also because they're, they are that slightly more kind of quirky um, style to them. Um, they're not super, super faithful to the, uh, to the Paul Kidby, um, uh, illustrations. Um, I, I'm also familiar with Bernard's work from the work that he did on, um, a range called Lilliput Lane, which I think was from the Leonardo collection. Um, my grandparents, uh, used to, uh, used to collect Lilliput Lane. So I've been familiar with Lilliput Lane for a while. And what they are, they're, they're very small. They're probably, uh, what are they? One to, one to a hundred scale, maybe something like that. Um, uh, model buildings of, of, um, sort of quintessential English houses and, and a lot of them actual houses, uh, from around the country. Um, so that kind of architectural modeling, um, Bernard actually was uh, a, a, one of their sort of more prolific um, sculptors. Uh, and he went on to do for Claire Craft some uh, similar, um, similar scale buildings for um, the Discworld series. So there's a, um, uh, there is a mended drum and there's a um, uh, Unseen University uh, Tower of Arts um, sculpture. There's, there's quite a few of them there. They're very pretty. So if you haven't seen those, um, check those out if you're a fan of Terry Pratchett or you just like uh, quirky fancy architecture. Unfortunately, uh, they're a bit rare now and they're also uh, the wrong scale even for sort of 15 mil gaming. So they're a bit small for, for what we need. Um, unfortunately, otherwise uh, I would have them on the table. Um, and then, um, so Bernard has then for, for the last uh, however many years 
been behind the counter at the Discworld Emporium uh, greeting customers, um, regaling them with his tales of Terry and, and tales from his own uh, experience, which is not less uh, interesting, believe me, um, and uh, commissioning uh, goods here, there uh, and everywhere um, and creating these, these wonderful um, tie-ins to, uh, to the Discworld world universe and um, so it'll be a great shame not to be able to go down to to Wincanton um, and see him again but I shall um, hopefully continue to uh, to be in contact with him he's a, a wonderful man um, and if you miss the opportunity and then perhaps send him a letter or send him an email he's quite easy to contact um, and he's uh, he's a very fun guy and watch out for um, for those Clarecraft sculpts and those uh, Lilliput Lane buildings uh, when they come up, the, the workmanship in them is uh, exceptional, especially when you consider that these are effectively you know, the, the kind of naff mantelpiece ornaments. Um, they're, they're extremely well sculpted pieces uh, in that category. Uh, so Bernard, thank you for uh, all that you have done to, uh, to inspire myself and a number of other uh, sculptors. Um, happy retirement, happy birthday, um, and hopefully uh, I will still get to, uh, to be in touch with you again. Everyone else, thank you for joining me, and take care, and I'll see you again next week.